Sometimes you wonder, is a movie worth being delayed three times? Or is it worth even becoming a movie at all? Let's go. So Black Widow. It's Marvel's next big movie in the MCU, otherwise known as Marvel Cinematic Universe. Although not chronologically, because this takes place after Captain America Civil War, but before Avengers Infinity War. The story follows our favorite Russian spy and assassin, turned Marvel superhero, Agent Natasha Romanoff, aka Black Widow, as she takes a blast from the past to reconnect with her espionage family that she hasn't even seen since childhood. The purpose of reconnecting this dysfunctional family is to go after the guy who actually created this dysfunctional family and take down him and the organization that's behind everything. The main villain in this movie named Draco, Drago, Big Draco, I don't know. He's pretty much the world's biggest control freak. He's the man responsible for kidnapping young girls and turning them into super spies. Super spies! The first thing you notice when you see a movie is the cast. And I think the cast was really well. I thought that uh, as a family, a, they really created a dysfunctional family for sure. And this is probably the most dysfunctional family you might have ever seen of because they were all grown up in this spy assassin type of world. I thought the acting was really good for the most part. I really love David Harbour. That guy is hilarious. I feel like uh, he could pretty much do anything. He could play a serious role. He could play a hilarious role. And in this movie, he is hilarious. You probably remember him from Stranger Things. Lawrence Pugh, um, she's incredible in this movie. She's probably everyone's favorite. But she plays the younger sister who really had it rough at a young age. She got taken away and she really had to figure things out on her own. You probably remember her from that movie with The Rock, Fighting With My Family. The action was great, typical Marvel style, you know, when they're posing in the background and they got the cinematic score going on and freaking explosions. They're looking out into the distance and it's like, oh my God. I mean, it's awesome, don't get me wrong. There's actually funny parts in the movie where the sister actually makes fun of her older sister, who's Natasha, saying, why do you make that pose all the time when you flick the hair back? She has a good point. You know, when you're in a battle, I don't know if you would really have time or think to do a pose like that. And it's just funny how she called it out and you kind of see it from the audience perspective of why that she does. I mean, it's awesome, don't get me wrong. I'm for it, it's cool to me. Story-wise, I feel like it did pick up halfway through the movie, definitely in the middle of the second, third act. I would highly suggest waiting for the end credit scene. You know how Marvel always freaking leaves these cliffhangers making you want more. It sucks, but and they're just amazing at it. Because when you see this cliffhanger, when you see this end credit scene, at first it's just, it hits you in the feels. And then it hits you in the freaking balls. You can't believe that they twist the next upcoming movie story like that. So definitely stay tuned to watch that. I would say it was a pretty good plot twist towards the end of the movie where you didn't really see something coming. I think Scarlett Johansson did a really good job in this movie. Um, and the movie is definitely well-deserved. It's a shame that it came out after the fact after phase four. So I think this movie would have felt better, would have done better if it was more in like uh, phase three, kind of where it's set in the actual story timeline after Civil War. Um, because she's, as a character and as an actress, she's definitely deserving of her own movie. Costume design was pretty good. I thought the the Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson's her costume, white one that you might've seen in the trailers, it looked pretty cool, pretty badass. And her father, who was apparently a super soldier, uh, I think he goes by the Red Guardian, and he's just hilarious because apparently never really recognized on a global scale, and he's always trying to compare himself to Captain America. If Captain America is asking about him, if he even knows about him, and it's just so funny because this guy is like, uh, he's a little older, he gained a few pounds, and he could barely get back into that costume. Special effects is nothing extraordinary. It's your typical Marvel style with the explosions. The fighting choreography was pretty good too. The sisters meet up and get into that first fight. You really feel the blows. You really feel uh, the pain that these two sisters really, or should I say the hate that they have for each other for not seeing each other in forever. And you, uh, you can see it's pretty balanced. I thought the idea of the villain was really, really cool because he incorporated all the Avenger abilities and uh, and weapons. And I thought that was a really dope idea how this one character had abilities to, if they wanted to, they could take this from that superhero, use this from that superhero. They just had everything installed in the suit. Pretty much it's a story about redemption and freedom. I don't want to spoil and get into it too much, but the heart of it though, it is about family. Like I mentioned before, this family is extremely dysfunctional. They've gone years without seeing each other. And what you know about families is that 
you might not talk, you might hate each other, but in the end, you're always there for each other. I thought this movie had good symbolism as well. You'll notice they had these things with like freaking lightning bugs and the singing and a whistle and whatever. And it's cool how movies, you know, they, they plant that and then they bring it back in a meaningful way. I know I mentioned a lot of good things, but unfortunately there's a few bad things that kind of overshadow the good. So let's get into that. So to bring it back to the story, because if you don't have a story, there might, there's like no point in even following or watching a movie. So the story, in my opinion, started off really slow. And honestly, I thought this was going to be an origin story all about Black Widow. I didn't expect it to be all about the family, which is dope. It's cool. I really, I really enjoyed the cast as a whole. But I thought we have more screen time for the sisters when they were younger and how they grew up in that crazy world of assassins and got trained and became a Black Widow. If you go to check this movie out, you'll notice that pretty much you do have younger actors, characters, but it's only during the intro part of the movie. And they literally fast forward the whole upbringing kind of through the beginning credits. And it's, I, I really hate it when movies, if you watch an older movie, a lot of these movies put the credits at the beginning of the movie. Next time you watch an older movie, like see how long that takes. It, it shows all oh, it was directed by this person. It was produced by that person. And it's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. But we could wait till the end of the movie to see all those credits. And I kind of like it when a movie starts right away. I just wish we had more of a character building when they were younger as kids, before they came super spies. Super spies! Another negative, which isn't huge because for the most part, the actors did keep these accents going. They're playing these Russian accents. And I, I think that for the most part, they did a really well job, but there's one scene, and I wonder if you guys can let me know in the comments what scene I'm talking about. It's like when all of them pretty much went out of accent, they went from freaking Russian to American real quick. You don't talk to me like that. I'm the boss, you better respect me. It just went from Russian to American real quick. I'm like, what's going on? Like, could they not have done this scene over? I don't know if it's because they got a little angry and the American came out of it. It's just, it's some of my people, a little thing. I was like, damn, because honestly, sometimes you're watching a movie and for me, it's like, is it a good accent? Is it not a good accent? I mean, I don't know. But for the most part, I think everyone held it down. It's just that one scene. Now, before I mentioned the villain, and honestly, this villain is kind of like a side villain. Whereas in the end of the movie, you more so have a bigger boss, almost like a video game. We have to make your way up the levels literally in this movie and then fight, and fight the final boss uh, or the final villain. And honestly, guys, when you're watching something like this, you really want to you really want to feel for the protagonist. You want them to have a, a real struggle. So in the end, you're at the edge of your seat. And this movie, you really didn't care for the villains, to be honest. You know, the I mentioned before with the side villain, I think his name is Taskmaster, believe it or not. I think he's a legit villain in the MCU. I found that out after the movie. But this guy, although he had the cool features, the ability to use superhero weapons, I really hated his suit of this Taskmaster, this side villain. He was pretty badass, but the suit, it just, it almost was laughable to me. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Like at first, I thought I heard breathing in the suit. He was wearing this mask and I thought I heard breathing almost like Darth Vader vibes. So that's one. And then second, he had like a freaking skull teeth showing here. And that reminded me of a freaking like a, a ski mask of like a biker, you know? And then third, he had like a freaking pharaoh collar. I was like, what are we doing here? What What's that? And on top of that, when you first see him use one of these abilities, it's like a fake Captain America. He's throwing this little baby shield. I'm like, what is this? Don't do that to Cap. Put some respect on Cap's name. No one should. We already saw fake Cap. We don't need another fake Cap. Don't do that. So I just, I was not intimidated by Taskmaster. Or I call him side villain. The main villain, the guy in charge of this whole organization. I don't know if it was the actor guys or if it was just uh, the character itself. I mean, we just, we didn't really know about this guy at the beginning. We didn't really, he just never came off terrifying. He almost came off as a joke. And it was just disappointing in the end. You know, it didn't really feel like a, a serious battle. Honestly, the idea of the organization itself and what they do is more obviously terrifying. But him as the man or in charge of it, I just, I just wasn't impressed. Two things to bring up. Well, that's four. Two things to bring up. When it comes to Marvel, at times, and we accept this, we know what it is. They have unrealistic humor and unrealistic action sequences. The humor part, you know, they'll be fighting. It'll be a serious match. And then at the end of it, they crack a joke. And half the time, these jokes are hilarious. You're like, ha, 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 cool, I get it. But then sometimes it's like, when you take a step back and look into it, it's like, I could see why DC is more serious at times because, you know, you wouldn't crack a, 
a silly joke like that after getting your ass kicked. And the unrealistic action, I mean, obviously it's an action movie. You're gonna have unrealistic stuff all the time. But I mean, even at the beginning of the movie, you know, you got this guy, he's, uh, you know, trying to hop a plane and he's hanging on to the, the wing of the plane. I'm like, he ain't no Tom Cruise. I don't know what he's doing. But geez, like how you do that and you shooting and this and that. And by the end of the movie, you know, people are just free falling. They just flying. And I'm like, how you not get hit by debris? You got a parachute. How do I not get hit by debris? Simple sound effects, you know, if someone's like making a step and you hear like the thump and it's like, or you hear like a loud, and it's like, is, is that really exaggerated? You know, I don't know if that required that sound effect. He's just walking. Although the music didn't make me jump out of my seat, the freaking back to the sound effects. Yeah, there were times where I did jump out of my seat and it's freaking annoying. And this is why I can't do scary movies. I'm sorry, it's the truth. You'll have a nice quiet scene where they have an intimate conversation that's so meaningful. Oh, that's nice, that's cute, that's sweet. And then you know, bam! And it's like, okay, really? Like, and at the, at the first time, like, okay, you got me, cool. The second time, you know, it's nice and quiet, do, 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 driving down the, driving down the street. And it's, you know, bam! And it's like, Okay, I knew that was coming, but you got me again. And then the third time, it's like, okay, let's all sing a song. And then bam, it's like, you know, it's just me. I'm a jumpy person. I don't like that, though. I don't like that. Can't we just transition? To, I know it's an action movie, but can't we just transition a little slowly? And I get why they do that. It's all because of the tone. They want to change the tone. They want to go from zero to 100. But I'm like, come on, can we like make our way up there? Do we have to jump from zero to 100? I get it maybe once, maybe twice, but I feel like this movie did like three, four times where it just changed completely. And it's like, okay, here we go. And overall, guys, honestly, I don't think um, Black Widow, the character itself, is one of my favorite Avengers. I think she's definitely necessary. She's a dope character, definitely a dope superhero. But just me personally, she's not one of my favorites. So it's not like I was really excited going into this. I was happy that I did see it for sure. Uh, it's just as you're watching the movie, it's like, wow, I know this character has a lot more in her. I know she could go through way more struggle. And truly, you know, by the end of this one, especially when you watch the end credit scene, you realize, okay, maybe the point of this movie was to set up the next phase. And not, and that's how the MCU does it. You know, they have these new actors and characters and, you know, then they take over pretty much. You know, they have these new, act these new characters who you're probably going to see for years to come. And I'm okay with that. I'm happy who they casted. I think they're going to do great in the future. So was it worth being delayed three times? I understand we have real world problems in 2020, but I think this should have been made a long time ago, back in phase three. I hope it gets the respect it deserves. I hope a lot of you actually go out and check it. At this point, if you really follow the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the MCU, you, you almost look at this movie as an afterthought. And I just don't think that's fair to the actor. I don't think that's fair to the character. But otherwise, it was a good movie. It was okay, you know? I probably wouldn't buy this at all because I collect movies. I probably wouldn't buy this. I'd probably watch it occasionally if it's in the background. I might watch it once streaming on streaming service, maybe like a couple months down the road, maybe a year from now. It's definitely a movie worth rewatching. Just for me, I probably wouldn't go see it again for a while. So with that being said, I thought this movie was pretty chill. It could have been better. It could have been worse. What are you going to do? Thank you for showing love to the channel make sure you hit that like button if you want to see more hit the subscribe button and if you could hit that notification bell just to get re uploads as soon as possible and honestly guys i saw this in imax it's been over a year due to obviously real world stuff and i thought it was cool seeing an imax it was nothing crazy it was cool i got my popcorn i got my slushy came out to like a hundred dollars you know how that goes I uh, probably won't do that again. You know, I got to save. If you want to go to IMAX, I don't know if you need to be an AMC member or what, but I think IMAX are giving out these Black Widow prelude uh, comic books. So I'm a collector. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. If you don't want to go to the theaters, you could watch it on Disney Plus Premier Access. I think it's like 30 bucks because they assume you're watching it with your family. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This is my first video. I had a great time and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Hey guys, just to bring it back, thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. This is just a quick outro, a quick, a quick special announcement and special dedication. Uh, this is my first video and uh, I've been planning this for a month and a half. I'm really excited. I'm honestly really nervous right now with the freaking, with the camera, with the lights. I honestly don't know what I'm doing, but practice makes perfect. My name is Chris. Uh, a few of my friends call me City. It's one of my many nicknames. That's the theme of the channel where, you know, just reviews from City's View. I thought that's a cool name. I plan on reviewing books, 
movies, video games, travel vlogs, just pretty much anything that I could review and find interesting, whether good or bad, I'm down to check it out. But on another note, not to change the tone completely, kind of like that movie, how, you know, you're relaxed and then bam, it's hype. This one, I'm going to tone it down just a little bit, but I want to give a special shout out to my family and also a, a sincere shout out to my uncle who did pass away uh, yesterday. And it was shocking to all of my family members and I'm out of state right now, so I can't really be there. But it's just, it's just very sad how, you know, you're, you're going through your daily life motions, struggles, happiness, and then bam, out of nowhere, you get news that something like this happened so unexpectedly. So um, it was my uncle, my uncle Craig, and uh, just any prayers or blessings is definitely appreciated. And uh, he was a great man. He was, a, he was definitely a, a great man. He was a nice man. And um, I just, I know he's at peace now. And I, uh, I thank you guys for watching this far. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because um, since it's my first video, I did want to do a special dedication to him. So Uncle Craig, this, this is dedicated to you. This is dedicated to my grandma and uh, all my family members, but especially you, Uncle Craig. Um, thank you for just being who you are and be at peace, rest in peace. We've always loved you. We still do. And we miss you. Thank you.